Yo, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Coffee Pod. My name is Chishi Z. Drink the coffee, it'll make you feel better. Woman discusses her experience with being sexually promiscuous and a Christian. No more wasting time. Let's get it. So I'm going to talk about something that might make you a little uncomfortable, but it's okay because we ain't about comfort over here. Okay. So my husband and I went to a event, I guess you can say, or like a class in church called Elevated Marriage. It was my first time there. It was his second time there. And I look at the topic and I'm like, hmm, what are they going to talk about today, right? And I look down at the paper and it says sex and marriage. Hmm. So I was kind of like taken aback by it because I've actually been like in my mind thinking about that a lot only because I look at sex from a negative lens kind of I could say God is healing me from that because of my past and I want to give y'all some revelation that I just got from yesterday so a lot of us grew up being very promiscuous if you did not grow up that way bless you you saved yourself from so much damage virgins are cheering right now I knew it <laughs> Oh man, let's keep watching. But because I grew up like that, when I got into a relationship that was actually a real relationship and now my marriage, I realized that because God took away my desire for promiscuity and all that stuff, that I didn't have a desire anymore, even like for my husband. And although my husband and I would have sex, it was like really hard for me. Like I really had to push myself to go there. And it was like an internal battle I fought because I felt so bad. I'm like, am I not attracted to my husband? Like, why don't I want to have sex? Yada, yada, yada. And I would have this conversation with God all the time in my head. I never talked to my husband about it. So yesterday I'm sitting in there and I'm just like, I can't believe God is answering this prayer for me right now. So here was the one that stood out to me the most. Mm -hmm. In the world, we are taught that sex is better outside of marriage. But in the kingdom of God and why he tells us to wait is because sex with your husband, when you become one with them, is actually like the highest form of praise to God. Like our bodies were meant to have sex and meant to be unified with one another in deep intimacy. And this lady told me, she was like, some of you need to forgive yourself for being promiscuous. Some of you need to forgive yourself or forgive the people that have introduced you to perversion and the things that you've seen even like as a child. And that made so much sense to me. Because think about it, you guys. If we were never meant to have sex outside of marriage, then we wouldn't be having these weird thoughts inside of marriage of, oh, I'm not that person anymore. Oh, I'm not promiscuous anymore. Oh, I'm not this. Oh, I'm not that. But it's that's a lie. You were meant to be hot with your husband or hot with your wife you would have became a freak anyways eventually with your husband or your wife right i don't know man i hope that hit y'all the way it hit me because it made a lot of sense to me it'll only make sense to the people that it's meant for guys i'm gonna have a pretty deep conversation right now centered around sex relationships and um faith christianity in specific or maybe you know any any other faith that where you believe in a god right First of all, I'm not giving advice here. I'm sharing thoughts that are, it's an open discussion. You can comment down below whether you agree or not. But I want to start here. I've received countless questions from men in the past, young men in specific, who wanted advice on attracting more women. Now, these were men who lacked confidence in approaching women and the ones I'm talking about in specific in this video is the fact that they were raised up in a faith that taught them that being promiscuous was wrong and bad for you. And um, I never knew how to approach that situation because I also was raised up in a very religious household and currently wouldn't label myself extremely religious, but I definitely believe in God. I definitely would identify with Christianity to an extent. but. My perception on a lot of topics is a lot different from a lot of people. So how does all this relate to this video? Well, the woman in this video said that she struggled with attraction for her husband once she converted to Christianity. Now, I've said in other videos that as a woman hits the wall and starts to consider life a little bit more seriously, 
and wants kids and a family. That's that um, biological pull to have a kid family. A lot of that stuff doesn't register practically in, am I, am I ready to commit to this marriage long-term? There's that number one issue. Meaning there are women out here who want family because they're seeing their window of fertility closing and that opportunity right there, their looks are on a decline, can no longer compete with their younger counterparts. So they're like, okay, find a man, usually this uh, is coupled with reinventing yourself, going back to God, going back to church. I'm not here to judge the whether these women are genuine or not. That is not my place. I am not God. But there's that aspect to it as well. Because I will say, you would be crazy to think that every single woman who gets to that point is being genuine. So there's that aspect. So the problem this woman presents is a problem of being naturally attracted sexually to her man. Now, she also reveals that for the majority of her youth, she was out in these streets, right? She was out in the streets. She was being promiscuous and then decided, you know what? I want to stop. I want to go back to the church. I want to find a guy in the church. Most likely this guy is the closest to a virgin that she, she probably um, can handle or wants. And then she makes a very interesting statement in the video. She says, why God wants us to wait for marriage, she says, is because sex with your husband is the greatest form of worship to God. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that statement because if you pay close attention, what it does is it removes, it, it, it removes accountability from this woman. I don't believe that God wants men and women to not be promiscuous because it's some sort of act of worship. I don't think that's it at all. And why I say that is the same reason a lot of people don't take Christianity very seriously is people want a reason to why. And I believe in most cases in the Bible, if you read stories of why God told people to do certain things, it was to improve their life. God wants people to do things, not because he says, oh, I want you to do this thing, so do it. No, it's because it's going to be good for you. It's going to give you a better quality life. Let me explain. The same reason why this woman is struggling to find her husband attractive in the bedroom is the same reason why I believe God doesn't want people to be promiscuous. As much as guys want to say men can have can sleep around as much as they want and not be affected, I believe men also get affected. Women, of course, get affected more mentally, but men also who lack sexual discipline also do negatively impact their life. So I always begin here when I'm talking to a guy who's like, well, I don't want to approach too many women because I don't want to mislead him into sex because I don't believe in sex before marriage. I always say, hey man, you're right. That's the truth. Relationships work better when you as a man run into a virgin and you are a virgin. In fact, there's studies that prove that if a woman sleeps with more than like what, five people? No, it was more than three people. Yeah, I believe it was more than three. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section down below. But she's 80% more likely to divorce you. Now, what more than numbers do we hear tossed around all the time? 40, 50. These women are out here in these streets. So I tell a lot of guys like, I, hey, you are right. And a lot of guys are afraid to approach women because they don't want to have sex and then they don't want to sin. This is where things get controversial with me. I don't think every person who's had sex before marriage is going to hell and they're going to burn forever. But I definitely think they're going to suffer the consequences of living that type of lifestyle. And hell might be the fact that they will never be able to have a healthy relationship with another person. And listen, I'm not saying this is proven to be true, right? But what I am saying is there are practical reasons as to why you shouldn't be promiscuous out here, especially for women. There are practical reasons. And this woman's situation is a very telling sign that she's suffering the consequences of living a promiscuous life in the past. I'm not trying to pull her down and say she's a horrible person here. I'm just speaking the facts. And even you as a man, if you spend the majority of your life sleeping around, you don't have the best quality of life. It's not what men think it's like, right? It comes with drama. It comes with all types of 
terrible things that could go wrong to you, right? People have diseases, they're having kids. It's a hell of itself. It's a hell of itself. So to a lot of guys who come to me and say like, oh, I, I want dating advice, but I don't want to um, have sex before marriage. I say, bro, cool. I think you should do what you want to do. I never tell people what to do. I also remind them this, that as a man, you have an easier time remaining a virgin because you already have to put work into sleeping with the woman in real life. But you have an easier time remaining a virgin than a woman will. The brutal reality is this. Drink the coffee, it'll make you feel better. There are more promiscuous women in the church than there are promiscuous men, period. They go to church, they ask for forgiveness, and they're good. And I tell a lot of guys like, hey, be prepared with the bitter reality that most women you're gonna run into today have bodies. And if you want to save yourself from marriage, that's great, but do it for you. Don't do it because you think you're gonna find a virgin. Listen, God might bring you a virgin. You might run into one, great. But everybody wants a chick who's not had hella bodies. We're just not living in that time, bro. Bitter truth. Most of you guys, women you're gonna date, you're not gonna find a virgin. You're not. I was in a podcast and we were talking about how there's no virgins in LA, right? It was like a funny thing to say. And um, I, was, I was talking about how there's three reasons a woman today would be a virgin. Number one, she's very sheltered, grew up in a very sheltered household. Like they were deliberately hiding her from the world. Two, um, very religious household, and she believes that religion and takes it seriously. Three, extreme social anxiety and etc. They do exist, but it's usually under those um, circumstances. A lot of these women in the church, like she said in this video, they had a lot of promiscuous past. Men too. Men too. There's that. The other main thing I want to focus on here, but by the way, this is not advice. So don't say, Chisha said, go sleep around because um, my wife is most likely going to have bodies. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm saying there are practical reasons for each individual person as to why they should be disciplined. And I believe God gives um, certain instruction for a reason right not just because and saying well it's is he wants us to wait to marriage because it's an act of worship nah it, it's no act of worship sleeping around damages women especially point blank period and this situation here is an example of how those women usually are damaged alpha widow type situation you're comparing your future husband doesn't matter how godly he is, sexual attraction is sexual attraction, but you're comparing him to all those sexual experiences in the past, which you'll never be able to forget. So guys, in conclusion, I just wanna say, be careful out here, man. Don't, don't allow every woman who professes she's you know reborn or um, changed her life to convince you that there's no damage that's done to her potential future marriage maybe with you be aware but hey what do i know like i said open discussion here's know what you think leave your comments down below i appreciate you for checking out yet another episode of the coffee pot till next time guys i'm out peace